Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial I'm not going to do any coding just because um, the coding that I've done since the last tutorial which I'm going to explain to you now is very very minimal and most of what I've done is um, kind of graphically oriented, orientated and it's not necessarily going to be useful to you. And I did have it in mind to show you an algorithm in this tutorial that finds the bounding box of the of the visible area of the bitmap. But what I realized is, after thinking about it, that's such an inefficient thing to do. And if you've got an area in your bitmap that's the bounding box and some of it's transparent, it's much better just to hard code the bounding rectangle values than it is to keep finding it all the time over and over again whenever you run your game. So what I've done is I went to GIMP and I just ran this image auto crop image feature and that removes any transparent areas of the image except for the bits that are needed to make it kind of rectangular or square. So I've got rid of most of the transparent parts of my image and my shadow and that left me with a little problem which is that now if I put the image on the sh directly on top of the shadow the shadow won't be in the right place. In fact I, I could actually have removed a lot more from this shadow because the only bit that you actually see is this bit on the left here and the middle bit is obscured by the actual image so if I wanted to be more efficient really I should remove even more of the shadow but um, I've cropped them down both quite a lot and what I did was in the init method of sprite of my sprite class this is where I'm supplying the bitmaps the shadow and the image I, I'm also now supplying a shadow offset X and a shadow offset Y and I just store those in private instance variables in sprite.java and then when I draw the shadow I add the shadow offset x and to the x coordinate of the shadow and I add the shadow offset y to the y coordinate of the shadow and then when I call um, sprite.init I supply offsets that move the shadow to the right place so it's very very simple and the end result is, is this but the great thing about it now is that let's, I've, uh, I actually commented out this update just temporarily but now if we, if we allow the ball to bounce again by running update, ball.update then the great thing is that the bounding box of the image really is the bounding box of my sprite now and that means that with a bit of luck the um, well, luck shouldn't really be necessary but hopefully the ball will now hit the edges of the screen and the alternative to that which I was going to do was to find the, ba the bounding area programmatically and then when I check in my ball to see where it's hit the edges of the screen I was going to check it against a bounding box that I defined programmatically somehow but that was ridiculous really this way is much better so um, now it actually doesn't, doesn't look perfect oh it does look perfect you know what the ball is actually hitting the exact edges of the screen but because the um, screencast is uh, slow and it only updates every few frames you don't see the actual edge of the bounce but um, so you're going to unfortunately have to take my word for it that now we've got the bounding box right and I've trimmed down the image to get rid of all the extra transparent stuff it is actually perfectly hitting the edge of the screen so that's it for this tutorial and until next time Happy coding.